Music, please. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Packard, your foreman for Building a Better World. We're going to do that by looking at some stories, some books, video, music, even magic. And if you stick around to the end of the show, we'll build a better mousetrap. We'll need some tools, of course. If you're going to build something, you got to have tools. Here's one. Here's another. <laughs> yeah, oh, if we have to build a, if we have to dig a foundation, we'll need one of these. <laughs> and if we have to go up on the roof, well, we'll just use one of these. Yes. Yes. You know what's cool about a ladder? That's right. What's cool about a ladder? It'll take you from the bottom to the top, one step at a time. You can do almost anything that way. If you want to do something difficult or something that takes a long time, just take it one step at a time and you'll get right to the top eventually. So the theme, of course, this summer was and is Build a Better World. And I came across a book that works perfectly with this theme. It's called Pay It Forward, 75 Ideas to Build a Better World. What a find. I'll share some of them with you. For instance, you can always do this. Smile. Smile, everybody smile. Okay, we'll, we'll do questions later, thank you. Everybody smile. Yeah, because if you smile, or better yet, make people laugh. Because people who smile and laugh a lot live a lot longer. They have a lot less stress in their lives. They get along better with other people. So if you smile, that's just one step toward building a better world. I have another toolbox and another tool. Now this is a very thin box because it carries a thin tool. I'm going to hide it to see if you can guess what it is. What kind of tool is it? It's flat. It's circular. It has sharp teeth, and it cuts wood. A saw, that's right. This is a blade from a circular saw. Now, it's important to keep your tools in a safe place. I always keep my saw right here behind this door so that whenever I need it, I know where it is, and it'll be sharp and ready to go. So if I want to use a saw, I just you know open the door, and I can get my saw out and uh -oh. use it. Did, did you see the saw? Yeah. You saw the saw? Yeah. Over here? Yeah. I don't keep it over here. That's not where I keep my saw. I keep my saw over here, on the left. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right, yeah, it was probably my left is what I meant to say. Yeah. No, okay, I guess it must be on my right. That would be this one. Oh, no, no, this is the right door, because it's the only one that's left. Right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's got to be right here, because that's where I left it. Right? I'm getting Sue saw sick. <laughs> Did you say that you saw the saw? Well, I say you didn't see the saw. See? <laughs> yep, it's... uh. I, I left it out, right? That's all behind us now. that you saw the saw that I didn't see, I can say that I can see the saw too. <laughs> see? Here's another tip toward building a better world. 
compliment someone, say nice things to people. I really appreciate how you don't ask questions during the show. That's good, yeah. And uh, I really like how you have your hair today. And Oh, isn't it a little embarrassing when you come to a public place and you see somebody wearing the same outfit? <laughs> Just sometimes, yeah. Compliment people. Say nice things to them. Of course, I'm just kidding. So, if you do that, you'll be what? Building? Building a better world. That's right. Yeah, I have another toolbox with some more tools. These are woodworking tools. They're real. They're sharp. They're dangerous. They're heavy. And I'll let you play with them. Who would like to uh, demonstrate my tools? I need like... You gonna be good? Yeah. Alright, one, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, you gotta use both of you. Five and six and seven. That's fine. Cool. Alright, right over here on the yellow line, please. And face out the audience so everybody can see your smiling faces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Alright, make a nice long line. We got it. Okay. Here are some woodworking tools. This one is for cutting wood. What is it? It's a saw. This is a hacksaw with it. And when you use it, what kind of sound does it make? It goes <laughs> Everybody say <laughs> Yeah, really loud because it's going to be a contest. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. There you go. Yeah, hang on to that. <laughs> Come over here on the other end of the yellow line. Right about here. Excellent, excellent. Okay, here's another woodworking tool. What is it? It's a drill. It's a drill. You can put a long bit in here. It spins around and you can cut holes with it. And this goes, rrr, rrr. Everybody say, rrr, rrr. Rrr, rrr. Oh, you guys are good. Here's one, you know. Hammer. You hit the nail on the head with that one, didn't you? This goes, tap, tap. Everybody say, tap, tap. Excellent. Now, this one is hard. It's a chisel, that's right. It does have a sharp blade, be careful with it. And a heavy handle, you hammer it like this, you can peel off pieces of wood and, and carve it. So this goes, chip, chip, everybody say, chip, chip. chip, chip. Uh-huh, now this one is a little tricky too. It's a file. Yeah, and you just scrape this across some wood and it'll peel up a tiny bit and smooth it out. And this goes, scratch, scratch. Everybody say, scratch, scratch. Very good. Here's another one you know. A screwdriver. A screwdriver. It turns screws and it goes squeak, squeak. Everybody say squeak, squeak. Squeak, squeak. Very good. And when you're done, you'll probably want to paint your project with paintbrush. a paintbrush. And this goes swish, swash. Everybody say swish, swash. Swish, swash. Very good. Now, I learned about these tools and the sounds that they make from this book called Old MacDonald Had a Wood Shop. Old MacDonald in this book is a lady sheep. That means you, technically. Yeah. Now, we're going to sing a song about these sounds and the tools, and you get to do it really loud for me so I don't look stupid, okay? <laughs> Can't help that, though. No. Old MacDonald had a shop, E I E I O. And in the shop she had a saw, E-I-E-I-O, zoot zoot, with a zoot zoot here, and a zoot zoot there, here a zoot, there a zoot, everywhere a zoot zoot, old MacDonald had a shop. Okay, everybody's got to make these sounds, okay? And in the shop she had a drill, E-I-E-I-O, rrr rrr, with a rrr rrr here, and a rrr rrr there, here a rrr, there a rrr, everywhere a rrr rrr, old MacDonald had a shop. E -I -E -I -O. That's better. And in the shop she had a hammer. E -I -E -I -O. Tap, tap. Tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. Here a tap, there a tap. Everywhere a tap, tap. Old MacDonald had a shop. E -I -E -I -O. And in the shop she had a chisel. E -I -E -I -O. Chip, chip with a chip, chip here and a chip, chip there. Here a chip, there a chip, everywhere a chip, chip. Old MacDonald had a shop, E-I-E-I-O, uh-huh. And in the shop she had a file, E-I-E-I-O. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch here, and a scritch, scratch there. Here a scritch, there a scratch, everywhere a scritch, scratch. Old MacDonald had a shop, E-I-E-I-O. Here's another. And in the shop she had a screwdriver. It goes squeak, squeak, with a squeak, squeak here, and a squeak, squeak there. 
Here a squeak, there a squeak, everywhere a squeak, squeak. Old MacDonald had a shop. E-I-E-I-O. One more. And in the shop she had a brush. E-I-E-I-O. Swish swash. With a swish swash here and a swish swash there. Here a swish, there a swash, everywhere a swish swash. Old MacDonald had a shop. E-I-E-I-O. Great. Now we get to do them all really fast and loud. Are you ready? Zit zit. Zit zit here. Zit zit there, here is it, there is it, everywhere is it, zit zit, rrr here, and a rrr rrr there, here rrr, there rrr, everywhere a rrr rrr, tap tap here, and a tap tap there, here a tap, there a tap, everywhere a tap tap, chip chip here, and a chip chip there, here a chip, there a chip, everywhere a chip chip, scritch scratch here, and a scritch scratch there, good, here a scritch, there a scratch, everywhere a scratch scratch, squeak squeak here, and a squeak squeak there, here a squeak, there a squeak, everywhere a squeak squeak, swish swash here, and a swish swash there, here a swish, there a swash, everywhere a swish swash, old MacDonald had a shop, E-I-E-I-O. Let's hear it for all my helpers. Thank you. You may go back to your seats. I appreciate that. Now, it's important after you use your tools that you put them away where they belong, just like you should with your toys. Now, I brought them here in this box just so I could show them to you, but they really belong back at home at my wood shop, and I'm going to send them there now with magic. Build a better world. Okay. They're back at home now because we're done using those tools because we've already built part of our better mousetrap. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. Here's another tip for building a better world. Put away your cell phone. When you're out at a restaurant with your family, instead of staring into a screen playing video games or texting how about having a conversation with the people you're with because the time you spend with them is precious and you can learn a lot about each other and it shows your respect so if you do that you will be on your way to building what a building a better world so do you like to make things yeah i like to make things too and i have a story about a girl who likes to make things it's a story by Ashley Spires, and it's called The Most Magnificent Thing. I'll tell you the story. This is an ordinary girl and her best friend in the whole world. They do all sorts of things together. They eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. Well, one day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She's going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures. And when she's done, she stands back to admire her work. But it doesn't look right. The thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of OK. It's all wrong. So she tosses the thing aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles, and she stands up and looks at it, but it's still all wrong. So she decides to try again. She saws and glues and adjusts. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She tries all sorts of ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it antenna. She adds legs. She makes it long, short, big, small, rough, smooth. One even smells of stinky cheese. But none of them are magnificent. She gets mad. If only this thing would just work. And then crunch, the pain starts in her finger and it goes up to her brain and she explodes. This is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this, I quit. Well, she and her best friend go for a walk. It's not much help at first, but as they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made and notices something really neat. Some of the parts of the wrong things are really quite right. Like the shape of one, the bolt on another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she knows exactly how to make the thing magnificent. So she works slowly and carefully, tinkering and hammering and measuring, and she finally finished. She and her best friend take a good look at it. It leans a little to the left, and it's a bit heavier than expected, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. 
They're not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. What did she make? A puppy. She made a little scooter for herself and her puppy. That's right. I was so inspired by this story, I thought I'd go to the junk uh, junkyard and see if what I could find, and maybe I could make something magnificent too. And I think I did. Would you like to see it? Yes. Oh, good. I'm so proud of this. Wow. Yeah, isn't it pretty? Oh yeah, this is so cool because I got some pipes and I stuck them together and I found a fuzzy ball and, and a funnel. Somebody lost a teddy bear and, and even an eraser. And I discovered that if you pull on the fuzzy ball, the funnel goes up with it. Isn't that neat? Yeah, and if you let the ball down, then the funnel goes down all by itself. <laughs> yeah, oh, and if you pull on the eraser, the bear goes up. <laughs> And when you let the racer down, the bear goes down. Isn't that neat? I've been playing this for, for, for hours. It's so much fun. Especially when you pull on the fuzzy ball and the bear goes up. Yeah, but it's connected to the funnel. We know that. Uh, but if you pull on the racer, then the funnel goes up. Because <laughs> it's connected to the bear, right? That makes sense. Yeah, if you pull down on the funnel, then, then the bear will go up, or you can pull up on the well there, and you can pull on the eraser here, and the funnel goes up. <laughs> Isn't this neat? Oh, this is so much fun. And I don't even know how it works, because there's nothing inside. Yeah, and if you put it back together, well, hmm, you pull on the ball, the bear goes up. <laughs> And you pull in the eraser, the funnel goes up. Isn't this the most magnificent thing? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Here's another step toward building a better world. Clean up litter. Clean up litter, yeah. Let's say you find some paper on the ground outside or some gum wrappers or soda can, go ahead, pick it up and put it in the trash can. It'll be better for wildlife, it's better for you and for me. And if somebody sees you do it, they might help you and you'll be building a better world together. Isn't that neat? Do you know what this is? Oh, it's not just any house. This is the house that Jack built. Well, actually, I built it. But I like the story, the house that Jack built. It was first published in 1755. That's before there was even a United States. Isn't that amazing? And over 100 years later, Randolph Caldecott published a version with his illustrations. I'll show you his illustrations in a minute. Randolph Caldecott was such a famous artist that today librarians get together every year and pick out a new children's book to give the Caldecott Award to for really good illustrations. Now I got a little tongue tied here. You may have to help me because this is the house that Jack built. And this is the inside of the house that Jack built. This is the house that Jack built. This is the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the cow with the crumpled horn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the maiden all forlorn that milked the cow with the crumpled horn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the man all tattered and torn that kissed the maiden all forlorn that milked the cow with the crumb of corn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. 
This is the judge, all shaven and shorn, that married the man, all tattered and torn, that kissed the maiden, all forlorn, that milked the cow with the crumpled horn, that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house, that cat filled. This is the rooster that crowed in the morn, that woke the judge, all shaven and shorn, that married the man, all tattered and torn, that kissed the maiden, all forlorn, that milked the cow with the guff of horn, that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house, that jack filled. This is the farmer planting his corn, that kept the rooster that crowed in the horn, that woke the judge all shaven and shorn, that married the man all tattered and torn, that kissed the maiden all forlorn, that milked the cat over the guff of horn, that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house, that just built! That's Aretha Franklin. Do you know what song she's singing? House that Jack built. That's right. Here's another step toward building a better world. Create a gift. Next time you want to give something to someone, instead of buying it, maybe you could make it. Make something that's meaningful to you as well as to the person that you're giving it to. And they will appreciate that and remember it for a long time. And so if you give things, you will be doing what? Building a better world, yes. Do you know who the most famous architects in children's literature is? I'll give you a hint, there are three of them. They're little. They have curly tails, and they built houses out of straw, sticks, and bricks, and they make funny noises like this. The three little pigs, that's right. Well, you know the story. Which is the only house left standing at the end? The brick house. So this is a very safe house, and that's where all the pigs live today. Let's see what they're up to. Nice living room, got a fireplace, and a fire going too. Oh, I don't see the pigs though. I hope they didn't step out for long. Oh, oh, they're just in the backyard. I think they're preparing a pork barbecue. <laughs> this is Eni. He's not very smart. He wastes a lot of time hanging out on a couch watching video games. <laughs> yeah, not very smart. And he built a house out of straw. straw. Yeah. Meanie is a bit smarter. He likes to read. He reads books and magazines. And he built a house out of sticks. Yeah. And Miney is the smartest of all because he reads lots of books. And he built a house out of bricks. Yeah. Do you know why there were only three little pigs? No. Well, after their parents had Eeny, Meeny, and Miney, they didn't want any more. We have a bad guy. Who is that? Bad wolf. A big bad wolf. What makes him so bad? When he checks books out of the library, sometimes he scribbles in them. Sometimes he tears a page. Sometimes he doesn't even bring the book back. That's a big bad wolf. Well, you know the story. The big bad wolf goes to the first house, the one that's made of straw. And he knocks on the door and says, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig says, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the wolf hopped and he puffed and he blew the house down. So he goes to the next house, the one that's made of sticks. He knocks on the door and says, little pig, little pig, let me come in. What does the pig say? And the wolf hopped and he puffed and he blew the house down. He goes to the next house, the one that's made of bricks. He knocks on the door, says, little pig, little pig, let me come in. What does the pig say? And the wolf hopped and he puffed, but nothing happened. So he tried harder, and it was like a hurricane or a tornado, and he started spitting. It was like hail and sleet and everything, and the, the pig went down to the basement just to be safe. Meanwhile, the big bad wolf kept huffing and puffing, and since he didn't get anywhere with that, he decided to sneak around to the side of the house and hide in the bushes and wait for the pig to come out. Well, 
Oh, the cake didn't come out for a very long time. As far as I know, the big bad wolf is still hiding behind the bushes right there. It, oops. Hey, the wolf. Where'd he go? He's on the car. Huh? He's on the other side. Other side of what? Turn around. Don't turn around. On the other side of this car? Yeah. No, no, he's not there. Okay, I'll look again. No, no, he's definitely not there. What? You want me to turn this around? Yes. Okay. Oh, did you mean the other way? Yeah. <sighs> Would you like to see the other side of this card? Yes. Well, I'll show you. The wolf is gone. Where did he go? In the house. In the roof. You know the story. He went down the chimney. He's in the brick house. He was hiding there the whole time. And then he got the fire in the Uh-oh. Oh, this is scary. If you see the wolf, will you let me know? Is he, is he by that chair? No. No. Could be on a shelf. Did you see him? <laughs> hey, you found him pretty fast. I guess he did go down the chimney. He just didn't get very far because of that fireplace down there. How about giving yourselves a round of applause for finding the world? Here's another step toward building a better world. Hold a door open. If someone is carrying something heavy or awkward and they want to get through a doorway, open it for them. Keep the door open so they can get through without struggling with it. That's a nice thing to do. And if you do nice things like that, you will be doing what? Building a better world, of course. Do you like building blocks? Yeah. What can you make out of building blocks? Lots of stuff. You can make, you can make towers, right? So here's a little tower made out of one, two, three, and four blocks. They're all separate. There's only one number on each one. So we made a tower that goes four, three, two, one. And I have another tower. It looks exactly like it. Four, three, two, one. And it, I keep it inside this square tube that has absolutely nothing else in it. Or so it seems. There's actually a really big construction crew that builds towers inside it. Yeah, even though there's just enough room for one tower. Yeah, I'll show you how it works. This is like a blueprint. The architect says, I want a tower that looks like 4321. And then the crew gets together and they build a tower that goes 4321 because they can follow directions. Can you follow directions? Yeah. yeah good. Okay. Now, the parts of the building don't always come in the right order. It's all mixed up to begin with, but the uh, blueprint says four, three, two, one. And so the crew gets together and they build the tower so it looks like four, three, two, one because they can follow directions. You see, it doesn't matter what order they're in. You can mix them up like this. The blueprint says four, three, two, one. And so the crew gets together and they build a tower that goes Four, three, two, one. Because they're professionals. Wow. Yeah. Now let's say that the architect would rather have the first floor on the bottom and the second floor above that. That's a little more conventional. So now he wants one, two, three, four. Let's see if we can mess up the crew. I'm going to turn some of these backwards and see if we can mess them up. They love a challenge, too. The blueprint says one, two, three, four. The crew gets together and they build a tower. One, two, three, four. Because they follow directions. 
Now let's say that the architect wanted to be clever and put one and three in the back and two and four in the front. Well, that's a little bit trickier, especially when you consider that there's no room inside here for anything else or for anything to turn around for that matter. But the crew gets together and they build a tower with four and two in the front. Yeah. Now, if you want one and three, well, that's okay. They can do that too. Really? Yeah. Now, let's make this one, two, three, and four. So now we're back to one, two, three, four. Let's make this even harder. I'm going to turn some of them sideways. We'll turn one of them upside down, backwards. Let's see what they can do with that. Yeah. The blueprint says one, two, three, four. The crew gets together, and what do they make? One, two, three, four, because they can follow those directions. Yes. How about you play the part of the architect? Okay, we'll let you put it in any order that you want. I pick people who are not getting too excited. Thank you. Would you like to, uh, number one, two, three, or four should go on the bottom. Which one would you like? One, two, three, or four. <laughs> three. Three. Very good. That one we'll put on the bottom, and we'll make this one different like a, like a two. Okay. Now we have one, two, and four left. Would you like one, two, or four? Three. Three. One. Okay. Uh, that's this one. We'll make this one different like a four. Okay. We got two and four left. Would you like two or four? Here. Four. 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 Very good. That goes here. We'll make this one different. Make it like a one. What do you think should go on top? Two. Two. Good choice. That goes there, and we got this one left over. So now, we've got three, one, four, two. But let's make it even harder. Let's say that somebody at the printing shop accidentally printed a page of the blueprint sideways. <laughs> yeah. Now, when the crew gets the blueprint, they don't ask questions. That's not their job to design. It's their job to take the blueprint, in this case, three, one, crooked, four, two, and they make it. Three, one, crooked, four, two, because wow. they follow directions. Wow. How about a round of applause for my crew? They're so good. I don't know how they do that. Do you like letter blocks too? Yeah. 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 What can you make with letter blocks? Well, letters are building blocks of words. And words are building blocks of sentences. Sentences are building blocks of paragraphs. Paragraphs are building blocks of chapters. Chapters are building blocks of stories and books. Isn't that neat? How many letters are there? Lots of letters. We only use 26 letters out of the thousands and thousands of books in this library. They only use 26 letters. Isn't that amazing? Wow. All right, I need some help with, uh, with this. I don't know who to pick. Um, tell you what, let me just toss out this construction item, and whoever catches it can help me, okay? Uh, let's see. Ah! Yes, come help me, please. Thank you. Hello. I'm Bill. What's your name? What's your name? It's a very quiet name, but okay, thank you. And uh, how many letters are there? 26, 26 letters. Now I have 13 blocks. That means there are two letters on each block. That saves a little bit of time. And uh, there's two letters. So which one is that? Okay, and this one is very good, All right? Here's another one. Good, Ooh, let's just do one more. Yeah, okay, so they're all here. We're just going to mix them all up. Can you throw them into the bag, please? Mix them all up, any order you want. Very good. Now reach in and take one of the blocks out. I hope you get a letter that has red on it. Did you get a red letter? You did, you did. And what letter is that? E. E, very good. It could have been anything, right? You picked E. Well, thank you. And we may get back to that later. Let's give her a round of applause for being a helper. I appreciate that. Yeah, now I'm going to use all the letters of the alphabet and make a tower, okay? No, we need all, all the letters. Here we go. Ready? It's going to be real big, too. Ta-da! 
I made a tower out of all the letters, didn't I? See, yeah. see I got A, B, C, D, E. Whoops. Where's the There. Oh. Wait, one letter is missing. Oh. I forgot to put that back. Boy, did I mess up. Well, that means the big one didn't go either. That's supposed to go there. Oh, dear. Hey. Can you think of a famous building that begins with the letter E? Is anybody thinking of the Empire State yes! Building? Yes! yes! You know, that's what you were thinking of. Complete with Aunt Chana. Oh, did somebody think of something else? Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah. The Eiffel Tower. We've got that one, too. <laughs> I like the Empire State Building. We're going to use this as part of our Better Mouse Chat. Oh. Yeah. So here's another tip toward building a better world. Everybody say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome. If somebody does something nice for you or says something to you nice, say thank you. And... That shows your appreciation. It will lift their spirits and yours too. And if you remember to say thank you, you'll be doing what? Thank you, the world, a better life. Building a better world. That's right. Yeah. Now, I told a story about a girl who likes to make things. Here's a story about a boy who makes things. He makes towers. And he can make them out of anything. He's really young too. He's barely talented. His name is Ignatius. But everybody calls him Iggy, Iggy Peck, architect. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two, when he built a tall tower in less than an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast when a blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Well, as you could guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. We do not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you want to see Principal How? No, ma'am, Iggy said, and he lowered his head, and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. They no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, alas kids, goodbye! Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a faint groaning sound. Luckily fainted, not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan that started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and last there at Blue River Pass were working together together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. Tree roots and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now the weekly guest speaker in t-shirts and sneakers shows buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, it's our guy who builds towers from Pi. That brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. You. Let's build a better mousetrap. Rube Goldberg, over a hundred years ago, 
was a popular artist. He was best known for his drawings of wild and crazy inventions that would never actually work, like this one. And I'm going to try to make a Rube Goldberg type device to catch a mouse. The world needs a better mouse trap. And uh, a lot of people use dominoes when they make these things, so I'd like you to watch this video of 27 students at the Seattle Public Library setting a new world record for the longest book domino chain. Count the books. Five, four, three, two, one. VHS tape. Don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of them there, and they'll fall like dominoes. And the last one should fall on another string. Which starts off our Mardi Gras party. The end of that starts a merry-go-round. It goes around and around, and we'll hit a golf ball, which will go through the house that Jack built. Release a uh, rat trap, but watch the mouse trap right here! Ah! It worked! Oh, 